let's talk about art production. We're in art is the expression or application of human creative skills and imagination. While production is the process of the thing being made. It can refer to the making of something or final product, whereas production is the heart of making arts itself. Since we are talking about production, we have the production process. The pre-production, production, and post-production. Pre-production where the artist always begins with an idea that he wants to express or communicate with his audience. It may not necessarily fully formulated, wherein it explores exposure, research, and other approaches to gather idea before actually making the work. Next, we have production, where we are creating an output, gathering and sourcing the materials needed to the creation of an artwork. And lastly, post-production, process where decision is shown as to how an artwork will be circulated not only in the world of art, but also in many in public. Next is award. It's not just an award that we give to people, yet there are things to consider in giving an award which are the numbers of years in participating in the arts, provided job for others, proven sense of nationalism, and noble and tangible action, and award this reputation was also very important. Recognition is an award that is something that is conferred or bestowed especially based on merit or need, whereas most of the artists want to be recognized with their work to be seen and appreciated by the world. Renown, on the other hand, where it is not enough that you are known to a limited number of people, but also outside the art world, his or her artwork made an impact to everybody. To be exact, we have Gamaba Awards, or also known as the Gawad sa Manilikhan ng Bayan, or the National Living Treasure as per Republic Act No. 7355. Tasked with the administration and implementation of the award as the National Commission for Culture and the Arts in April 1992, the highest policy-making and coordinating body for culture and the arts of the state. Gamaba show means a citizen engaged in every traditional art uniquely Filipino whose distinctive skills have reached high level of technical and artistic excellence and have been passed on to the generation and widely practiced with the present generation in his or her community. The very purpose of this award is to give honor and pride to those traditional folk artists to preserve their work, skills, and crafts. If we have an award, of course, we have qualifications to become Manilika ng Bayan. First, the artists or artisans inhabit of an indigenous or traditional cultural community anywhere in the Philippines that has preserved indigenous customs, beliefs, rituals, and tradition, and or has criticized whatever external elements that have influenced it. Next, he or she must have engaged in folk art tradition that has been in existence and documented for at least 50 years from now. As an example is art of Fernando Amorsolo during 1938 entitled Dinner in the Sun. Next, must have consistently performed or produced over a significant period works of superior and distinctive quality. Also, he or she must possess a mastery of tools and materials needed by the art and must have an established reputation in the art as a master and maker of works of extraordinary technical quality. And lastly, he or she must have passed on and or will pass on to the members of the community their skills in the folk art for which the community is traditionally known for. Even if the traditional artist is incapable of teaching his or her masterpiece due to advanced age or sickness, he or she can still be rewarded if First, he or she had created a significant body of works and or has consistently displayed excellence in his practice of his or her art, thus achieving important contribution for its development. Next, has been instrumental in the revitalization of his or her community's artistic tradition where he restore or make an art alive in the community. 
also, he or she has passed on to the other members of community skills in the folk art for which the community is traditionally known for. And lastly, the community has recognized him or her as a master and teacher of his or her craft. A good example of this two qualification is the 106-year-old Apo Wangud learned the art of tattooing from her ancestor and has since passed it down to the younger generation in her village. Her dedication to passing down her skill to younger generation remind us to the importance of learning from our masters. Now we have the categories in traditional arts. Traditional art is very important as it provides a shared experience for the community. Values and belief system are often embedded in these art forms and passed down through generations. As one of the categories, folk architecture as it differs significantly per ethnic group, where the structure can be made of bamboo, wood, rock, coral, rattan, grass, and other materials. Next is weaving. The tradition is considered as an artistic expression of beliefs. For instance, textiles and colors are used to represent different rituals in the country. Carving as the act of fashioning or producing by cutting into or shaping solid material as a wood. Next is performing arts that can be in a range of discipline which include theater, dance, and music. While literature are the poems, books, and writing that usually depicts our culture, tradition, or even the prehistoric era of the Philippines. Graphics and plastic arts, wherein graphics are like photography, tattooing, painting, or calligraphy, while plastic arts are physically manipulation of plastic mediums. Ornaments as jewelries, accessories, or embellishment as markers of identity, culture, and tradition of each group. While textile is from interlacing natural or synthetic fibers as well as fiber art. And lastly, we have pottery that holds social value and importance like manunggal jars in the Philippines. Awards incentives of Gawad sa Manilikhanang Bayan or the National Living Treasure Award. Ginaw, a Filipino poet, Born in January 3, 1953 in Oriental Mindoro and is a Hanunuo Mangyan descent, renowned for his dedication to conserving the Mangyan Ambahan poetry tradition, he earned recognition as a national living treasure by the Philippine government. Here is an example of his work, Ambahan, which is a poetry written in bamboo. Next is Federico Caballero, born in December 25, 1938, in 2000, Federico Caballero received the Gawad sa Mandalika ng Bayan Award for his mastery of the Su Sugidanon, which are the 10 epic narratives originated from Central Panay. Under music, we have Alonso Saklag, born in August 4, 1942, awarded for his mastery of the Kalinga musical instrument and mastery of the dance patterns and movements associated with its people ritual in the year 2000. He is the founder of Kalinga Budong Dance Troupe, which tours around the world. Osino Interay, born in April 10, 1943 in Palawan, and he mastered the instruments Basal, Kulyal, and Bagit. Basal is a kind of musical ensemble played during a rice wine drinking ceremony. Kulyal, a lyrics poem about love being sung to the accompaniment of kusyapi, two-string flute, and paga. Bagit, an instrumental music reflecting the sound and movement of the nature. Sumaon Sulaiman, a musician in Maguindanao who is outstanding player of kutyapi. A two-string pluck flute, he was awarded in the year 1993. Uwang Ahadas Isayakan, who is an expert player of Quintangan Kayu and Ago. He was awarded in the year 2000. Under weaving, we have Lang Dulay, a Filipino traditional weaver who was a recipient of the National Living Treasure Award in 1998. She is credited with preserving her people's tradition of weaving, Tinalak, a dyed fabric made from refined abaca fibers. Salinta Monon was a textile weaver who was one of the two recipients of the National Living Treasure Award in 1998. She was known for her Bagobo Tagabawa textile and was known as the last Bagobo weaver. 
her work, Inabal, is considered as a symbol of wealth, offering to the deities and gift for rituals. Narhata Sawabi, a weaver from Parang Sulu, was celebrated for her skills in crafting this Shabit style, a traditional Tausug cloth tapestry commonly worn as a head covering, bag, accessories, and more. She was honored with the National Living Treasure Award in 2004 for her contribution to this art form. Haja Amina Api, a mat weaver from Tawi Tawi, she is respected throughout her community for her unique designs and complex geometric patterns. Estelita Tumandan Bantilan, also known as Love Knight, is a renowned master weaver of Bla and Mats called Igem. She was honored with the prestigious Manilika ng Bayan Award in 2016 for her exceptional talent and contribution to Filipino culture, loveness and to create craftsmanship and dedication to preserving the cultural heritage of the Blaan community, have made her a symbol of artistic excellence and cultural pride. Her work serves as a reminder of the importance of cultural preservation and appreciation. Labne's legacy continues to inspire future generations to embrace their cultural roots and pursue their passions. Magdalena Gamayo is a highly skilled textile weaver from Pinili, Ilocos North, Philippines, specializing in the traditional Ilocano art of Abel weaving. Her craftsmanship and dedication have earned her recognition in the field and she has made significant significant contribution to preserving the Ilocano weaving tradition. Magdalena is also known for her expertise in Pusiso and Inuritan weaving techniques, showcasing her commitment to preserving and promoting Ilocano weaving traditions. Her creations are a testament to the beauty and artistry of Ilocano textile. Next is Ambalang Ausalin is a skilled Yakan textile weaver known for her expertise in weaving Sinaluan and Sipetuangan textiles. Sinaluan showcases vibrant colors and geometric patterns, which Sepetuangan involves creating intricate hand woven handkerchiefs. Ambalang's craftsmanship preserves the rich cultural heritage of the Yakan people and highlights the beauty of Yakan textiles. One of the best known in metal work is Eduardo Muto. He is a highly skilled metalsmith hailing from a palette of Panga in the Philippines. With a passion for metal work to span over 17 years, he has established himself as an accomplished artist specializing in the creation of both religious and secular art. He was born and raised in a palette and he has, immer he has been immersed in the rich cultural heritage of the region, which has greatly influenced his artistic style, drawing inspiration from the tradition and craftsmanship of his community. He has developed a unique and recognizable approach to my work. Let me introduce you to Teofilo Garcia, a skilled casque maker from San Quintin, Abra. Teofilo specializes in crafting tabungao hats, also known as katupong hats, which are traditional headpieces in the Ilocano culture. With his expertise and attention to detail, Teofilo has been dedicated to his craft since 2012, creating beautifully crafted hats that reflect the rich cultural heritage of Ilocano people. His work as a casque maker showcases the artistry and cultural significance of the Kano headwear.